Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're going to be looking at the Ray Systems Multi-Ray Plus. It's a 5 gas monitor with a PID. We're going to be using isobutylene, we have here, and a 4 gas mix. Now this one's a little bit different than normal. Uh, there's two different blends out there for Ray. They have a 10 parts H2S and they also have a 25 parts. This is the 25 parts H2S. So it's 25 parts H2S, 50% or 50 part per million carbon monoxide, 2.5% by volume or 50% LAL methane, and they use 20.9% oxygen for this one, so we're not going to be checking the oxygen sensor using it with the nitrogen balance. Of course, important things to do here, always check your use before date and make sure that your gas is good on both cylinders. Put those to the side here. And now, in addition to that, we're also going to need a demand flow regulator because this is a pumped instrument. And some tubing with an adaption fitting here. Now Ray sells these, you can also find them from a few other companies like MSA, but this is what's going to hook on to here. Okay, let's get this started. Start it, press and hold the mode button, wait till it beeps, and let it start up. And while that's going through, let's get the gas together. Now a quick bit on five gas instruments. The PID sensor, which you calibrate with isobutylene, adversely affects the CO sensor. So what ends up happening is the CO sensor holds on to a lot of that isobutylene and it'll screw up your calibration. So what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate with 4 gas first and then we're going to calibrate with the isobutylene. So while it's going through. The system here has a long startup time so basically one of the things to do set up the sensors, let it go and then generally go and make a sandwich and come back to it and you should be good. It goes through, tells you a number of, a lot of information if you want to look at it. it. Gives you your alarm limits for all of your sensors, both the low and the high. Right now it's on the high, on the low. Gives you your stell values and also your TWA values for what you can expect for alarms. Last calibration dates for the unit. and what your battery is at. Now there is a quicker way to start up this instrument. If you want to, you can start it up in diagnostic mode. And basically to do that, while well, this is going, is you press and hold mode and yes at the same time. Wait for it to beep, then let go of the on, like, then let go of the yes. And when it goes through, what you're going to do is wait for it to say diagnostic mode and then hit yes. Then it'll run through this checklist very, very quickly and once it's up and showing you raw values, press yes and mode again. And we'll get you going. Okay, fresh air calibration. I'm going to say no to this right now so I can show you the full procedure. Okay, showing generally zeros across the board. We got one on our CO. And now we're going to do in order to calibrate it. And if you hear something in the background, this video is taken on my phone and that's probably people texting or messaging me, so don't mind that. Calibrate it. I'm going to press and hold the mode and the no buttons at the same time. Press and hold. Now release. It says enter password. If you have a password on there, yes will bring it up, no will bring the number down, and pressing mode will advance you through it. If you have 0000, zero, zero, zero like almost all of them are, press and hold the mode button. And it will pause the data logger, and now you're into calibration mode. On this menu, click yes to enter the menu. Fresh air calibration. Make sure you're first in fresh air and then click yes. Now it's going to go through a zero in process. While it does that, we're going to take our setup here and we're going to put it together. Here's our demand flow regulator. Grab your four gas cylinder. Screw it in. You don't have to screw it in too tight. It's an O-ring seal, so it's just a little bit. Grab your hose. Connect it to the end. And there we go. So now we have everything set up well. Now it says multiple sensor calibration. Let's make sure you can see that. Go ahead and press yes. And it'll ask you what sensors you want to calibrate. We have CO, LEL, and RH2S. That's correct. Hit yes. Now it says apply mixed gas. Take your hose with your demand flow regulator and put it on there. It's going to take about a minute to calibrate the instrument for these sensors. 
if you don't have a demand flow regulator and you're instead using a regulator that looks something like this, what you'll want to do when you screw it in is to get the regulator in the cylinder, you're first you're going to want to screw it open this way. Keep this open, screw it into your cylinder. When you hear gas start flowing, turn it off. And then when you're going to attach it to this, make sure you turn the gas on, then attach it to here for calibration. I don't really recommend using a regulator like this, but that's how you do it if you have nothing else available. I have about 20 more seconds of calibration here. eight more seconds and I'll show you the correct procedure for taking this off if you have a no matter what kind of regulator as soon as it's done wait for these values record them if you want to 50 that one's 25 49 occasionally they won't match exactly uh, what says turn off gas just disconnect and you're good occasionally those won't match exactly what's on your cylinder here but if it's about one part per million or one percent LEL around, maybe two, you're good. If it's any more than two, I would recalibrate it. Now I'll go ahead and disconnect your cylinder, put that aside, and grab your isobutylene cylinder. Put this on here, screw it in. Never had this much trouble putting a. There we go. Okay. Now, we're all connected. Get our tube. We're good. Single sensor calibration. Hit yes. Now it says pick which sensor. We're going to want to calibrate the VOC sensor. So hit mode once. Now click yes. Apply gas, isobutylene. And make sure that, that gas matches what's in your cylinder. If it says some other gas like ammonia or uh, let's see what other ones are there out there. And there's a few other ones out there that you might be looking for that may be on there, but you really generally want to calibrate with isobutylene unless you have a special situation. By default, it's always going to be the isobutylene. Now, one thing that's happening, the reason that we're calibrating this now as opposed to first is it's also going to hit the carbon monoxide sensor. Isobutylene will definitely show a reading on your carbon monoxide sensor, and what it will do is, let's say you have a, a small sensor. Let's pretend this is carbon monoxide. Inside here there's a little filter and what happens is it takes that and it absorbs the carbon, the uh, isobutylene and anything else that's not carbon monoxide for the most part. What happens is when we're pushing this gas in there, there's so much that it overwhelms the filter and we'll go through. Now when you first buy your instrument, that's not going to be true. You can put isobutylene on there all day and you won't see a carbon monoxide response. But about three months in, you're going to see a huge response. And then what that tells you is that that carbon filter is is done, either it's time to replace one in here, or maybe even time to get a new sensor, but most of the time if you replace the carbon monoxide charcoal filter in this, you'll be good. Okay, there we go, VOC Cal, reading 100, turn off. So now we turn that off, put this to the, unscrew this here, never leave regulators just sitting in cylinders sitting around, unless you have them mounted. And that's off to the side. Now let's take a look here. Everything is done. So now to exit, we're going to hit mode once, and you see it's going to alarm, and the reason is, you see the CO? That's what I was talking about, about the isobutylene. Now that will come down slowly over time, so you just kind of watch it. It has to sit, probably takes about 5 to 10 minutes to come down all the way. Uh, if you start it up later and it still shows about 1 part per million or 2 part per million, you may need to re-zero the instrument, but that's not really a big deal. What happens is the charcoal filter gets filled with the isobutylene and it slowly releases it. So you'll see one or two parts for a long while. But after that, to turn it off, just press and hold the mode button again and it'll end up going off. And basically what will end up happening is that it'll finish the calibration and you'll be all set. If you guys have any questions, the number here is 734-956-0539.
My email address is james at idealcalibrations.com, or you can always check out our website, www.idealcalibrations.com. We'd like to say thank you to the Monroe Fire Department for letting us borrow this instrument to make the video. We really appreciate it. And if there's any videos that you would like to see made that we don't have, feel free to give us a call, send us an instrument, and we'll put a Cal video together for you. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day and stay safe.